and our YouTube. Warble's on a lot here. And uh, a couple of times I've mentioned that we have a nuclear power station shop in the main street of Glen Innes. And a few people probably haven't believed me. So I thought we'd just go inside and have a bit of a look and talk to uh, an old mate of mine, a fella called Howard Eastwood. He, uh, he actually invented the one hour fast processing colour photo machine and sold his patent to Kodak and made a heap of money. So this guy's actually got the money to buy a nuclear reactor, therefore he's selling them. Warbles on a lot. Going to investigate. grade signage. Just talking for the camera Howard. I'm explaining what we're having a look at. We have uh, the official optimistic view of the Japanese nuclear industry. And there's Howard over there. We'll have a bit more look at his signage before we go and have a talk. Um, yeah. Solar, that's, that's a little bit about what I know about. Uh, from what I know, solar thermal will... In 1913 there was a bloke in Egypt who was pumping 100,000 gallons of water per day, 24 hours a day, and he had an underground reservoir keeping uh, boiling ethanol water mix and he was running that <coughs> through a heat exchanger using ammonia, which gets him five atmospheres of pressure to run his steam engine. 24 hours a day with solar thermal, so that's, that's not new. Ocean wave power, that's a good way to break your equipment. <coughs> Geothermal, a lot of power where nobody lives. Wind power, anywhere where there's enough wind to make power out of it, you don't want to live there. So, photovoltaic is what works at the moment, and Howard being a bit of a visionary, he's got a sunfoil on the roof of the car that he drives to his nuclear power station shop, and there's a funny story there because he used to drive an electric plug-in, but you see, the New England Tablelands is called that because it's cold and the, the electric plug-in spent a night at minus 12 degrees and that killed its lithium-ion battery. And that meant next time they tried to charge it, it turned the battery charge regulator into a hole in the universe where a regulator used to be. So, yeah, Howard drives a Sunfoil-equipped car because that's what actually works here and now. But we're going to have a bit of a talk and... Uh, Perhaps Howard can tell us why he's got a nuclear power station shop in Glen Innes. Why well, do you want to do it, Howard? Well, we have to reduce our CO2 level. That's yes. a main, uh, issue that seems to be for the future. If you're, uh, there's two points of view on climate change, and I've had uh, both the opposing that say it's a natural phenomena and there's nothing for us to worry about. I don't know about nothing to worry about. Uh, and others who say yes, uh, man has is contributing to the changes that are taking place. So depending on which way you take it, I'm a bit still inclined that it's not a natural, it's ahead of a natural thing, it's happening too quickly and the evidence from a scientific point of view on all the papers that we receive is that man is contributing to certain increases which appear to be having a secondary effect on our environment. Therefore, let's sort that out. And one of the principal ways of doing that is to reduce our carbon footprint. And I received only an email yesterday, I just replied to it from the petroleum research people in Brisbane who uh, are really pushing the conversion to coal, which I noticed that, uh, that uh, Kevin Rudd had in his speech, acceptance speech, 
mentioning in that the possibility of pushing for gas conversion for while he's still leader, or now the new leader again, uh, pushing that uh, avenue to take place. We have to reduce our carbon. So that's part of it. And of course nuclear is a carbon free, very powerful, continuing base power. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have uh, wind or solar, we need that for peak power, but we do need uh, a better continuous source because we're going to use more and more electricity. Our standard of living depends on energy, so we don't want to be burning coal to produce it. Thank you. Uh, no worries, Howard. I, I fully agree. We've, um, we've got a choice between continuing to use the amount of energy that we do at the moment and destroying the environment for our children and grandchildren, or finding some other way to get energy, or reducing the amount of energy that we can get. And uh, I understand that if everybody in town was to have an electric car, we wouldn't be able to get enough electricity from the existing coal-fired grid. That's correct. That's correct. correct. Yep. And if you reduce our usage of power, which upsets my wife, which is a representative of the other female part of our society. Yeah. <laughs> they, they don't accept that. They, like they, they don't want to go back to washing by hand here. No, and they don't, even getting dressed or undressed in the cooler weather, not in front of a fire, oh. seems to upset them. <laughs> I, I can understand that. I can understand that. I, I, I had to boil the water and carry it to have a shower to get here clean smelling today. Um, so it, would it be right that at the moment there are industries in town that are already having trouble getting smooth, uninterrupted power? Well, our particular factories, so we've got two of them in town, uh, <coughs> the, things have been fairly well, but believe it or not, it's the solar on the roof that has interfered with their supply because uh, when that is put into the line, it causes ripples because the power goes in at a slightly different voltage to what... Uh, what is the standard for the line, plus the fact that it's oh. got to go in yeah. the wrong way round that normally comes... So you're getting voltage fluctuation on your supply because you're putting so much into the grid at your location? Yeah, well, not that us, we haven't got solar on, but the different ones around... Oh, I see, as, as, yeah. as a cloud moves across the town, it yeah. causes a ripple in the voltage across the grid in town as... As they put the voltage. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Well, anyway, Howard, thanks for giving us that explanation for why there's a nuclear power station shop in Glen Innes. And um, I guess with the Liberals and Nationals looking as if they're uh, in something of a winning position, you might even be able to get the regulations changed so you'll be allowed to use your nuclear That's power right, station. Yeah, we might be able to import it through Newcastle. Yes, we'd like to build it in Australia, but of course we haven't any... Uh, <coughs> The last faculty at the University of New South Wales was closed down under the current government. Oh, I see. So we have no training facilities at all. And all our scientists are retiring because they were trained in Britain. Yeah. Yeah, they're falling behind. Oh, I see. Okay, well, I think we might um, upload that this afternoon or tonight. Okay. Waffles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao. And just as a postscript, this magnificent nuclear power station shop is actually a long lost relic of the days when photography used to happen chemically because uh, not only did old mate invent the fast colour processing photo developer he used to run his own little retail photographic chain Glen Innes not quite such a rural backwater eh? Ciao.